What is up guys, my name is Barry Michael Doyle and I'm going to be talking about the best ways to bind this with your React JavaScript components. So it has been a while since I've made videos, sorry, life has been busy, but if you do enjoy my videos and would like to see more, please make sure that you leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and hit that little bell if you want to get notifications for more videos, because I do plan on making more soon. I'm getting back in the zone guys, I really promise. Anyway, let's carry on. So, here's a simple scenario of our little React component. <laughs> it is really basic. It's literally just a counter button. So this is a button that has a state there, the counter state. And uh, the button's text is actually state's counter value. So this is a button where you click on it and we're supposed to increment the counter. And uh, we think it's all set up nicely. I mean, there's your whole state where you initialize your state and there's increment counter event handler that sets the state to be the previous state of the counter plus one. This is the best practice way of incrementing your state or changing your state based off of the previous state. So if that looks a bit weird to you, don't worry, that's normal. It's actually the better way of doing things because sometimes weird things happen to the state. It's very rare, but it can happen. So make sure you set your state that way. Anyway, what you'd usually do here is you'd run your program and you'd be like, cool, this is totally gonna work. You get all excited and you click run and this error occurs. Uh, you have this whole, this is undefined error, and you freak out, you have no idea what's going on, and you really question your future as a developer. And it's really frustrating because it's like, why is this happening to me? But then you'll quickly Google things and be like, oh, right, there's a quick fix way of dealing with this. And the problem is, it's a JavaScript thing where you've got to bind this, the specific word, this, it's kind of weird to think about. Uh, we've got to bind this to our event handler so that you get the correct context of this. There are four possible solutions to this. The first one would be a quick fix. It's binding in the render function. I'll, I'll go through all of these in detail now. The other one is the arrow function in the render, which is another quick fix. Or you could put an arrow function in your class property, which is a nice clean fix because you don't have to use anything cool. And then there's binding this in the constructor. So that's a recommended fix. It's the best practice way, but I'll save the best for last. That way you actually watch my entire videos. Thanks for that. So this is a solution for quickly fixing things. Uh, it's binding in the render function. As you can see there in the render function, we're returning the button and on the click there, I've highlighted it. It's the event handler and you just bind this to it straight there. So the pro of this is it's super easy to do. You literally just add the dot bind this text to your event handler and it works. Um, the con to this is the way the render function works in React is you'll get a performance knock because every time props change and you re-render this button, it's going to have to rebind this to the event handler. And you don't want that if you're going to be re-rendering this button a lot. It's just best practices, you know, we want to focus on the best way to do our applications because although this will work, we don't always want it to just work. We want it to perform the best that it possibly can. And as your applications get bigger, you want things to work as best as possible. The ugly thing about it is you don't really want to be adding functionality to your render function renders for displaying things, not for calculating things and doing things. So keep that stuff separate. Anyway, there's another quick fix and that is setting your arrow functions in the render. Now this is also like the other one ugly because you're adding a function to your render, which is, is not ideal. And again, it's a performance knock because here we are, we're making a little function and basically every time you re-render this whole counter button, we're adding this function back in and redoing that whole setup. So again, this is clean and uh, you don't have to use the bind method as well, which is pretty great. And yeah, you know, it's a pretty simple fix to everything. Another thing that sucks about this though, is that it auto binds things for you. So you don't always want to automatically bind things to you. I'll talk about this a little bit later, but auto binding, again, 95% of the time you do want to bind your functions, but those times you don't, it would be nice if things don't just automatically bind things for you. So this is a very clean fix. As you can see, I've highlighted there, you increment the count and you just use the ES6 functionality of making a function there. It's pretty straightforward. It's nice because it's really clean to fix. It performs much better than the previous two methods because it's not happening in the render method. And you don't have to use the bind method either. So again, a con with this is it automatically binds things for you. And the method that I'm about to show you is much better well, it's not that much better, actually. It's like a fraction better, but it's the best practice way and it's the thing encouraged by the React documentation. Here we are with the final recommended fix that I'm providing you. 
it's binding your event handlers in the constructor. So in, in our case, we have to first make a constructor because we didn't bother making a constructor. So you make your constructor and then by default, you call super props because that's how constructors work in React. And then this is as your component is built for the first time. So it can re-render and stuff. And it doesn't matter because this has happened the first time it was built and only had to happen once. You basically set the increment counter to be bound by this right there as we construct this component. So the pros of this is, again, you'll have that clean render function. This is the best practice recommended by the React developer core team, which is awesome because they know what they're doing and they actually know what they're talking about. And they're going to be focusing on optimizing things around the documentation that they have written. So this is definitely the safest bet for making sure that you're going to be taking the best possible solution in building your React components. And another nice thing about this is it doesn't auto bind your components for you. So again, I mentioned auto binding is a thing. I want to talk about that a little bit. So you do get packages out there, like multiple methods where you can actually auto bind your functions. It's not a good idea because it's not maintained by the core dev team. So they won't be in sync with what's happening with new React developments. And another thing I don't like about it is there's stuff happening to your code that's out of your control and it's just weird. So I'd rather keep things simple and actually code in specific functionality yourself so that you know what's going on. This will make you a better developer and make it less likely for things to go wrong when you're doing your coding. Anyway, there's a con to this. You end up writing more code, like especially in our case now, we didn't have a constructor function. So we had to add the whole constructor method into our component. And this is just time consuming to type, but I mean, you get used to it. Like this becomes like second nature to you and you just code it through. If you did already have a constructor function, then it's chilled. You just had to add that one line that this dot increment counter equals this dot increment counter dot bind this. Again, there's nothing wrong with the previous ways I mentioned to do this. Well, there is, it's not the best practice way and there's not a good performance, but the thing is those other things will get it working, which is cool. And I do recommend that you just follow a code style guideline. So if you're working on a project where everything is done one way, just keep it up with consistency. Uh, it's just better that way. It's going to make your code easier to read for other developers. And yeah, it's all about clean code, you know? Uh, but I do definitely recommend this method here because again, it's documented best practices. So I recommend this because you might be wanting to scale the application for performance and this, this will provide you the best performance. So just do it. Anyway, guys, that's going to cut it for this video. I just wanted to mention one more thing. So this video was inspired by code complete. I've been going through this book and it is amazing. Uh, it's a lot of content and pretty hectic to read, but if you want to advance yourself as a developer, definitely check it out. It will help you with your personal applications. It should help you at work. It just helps you think about why you do things, how you do things, and it will encourage you to perform best practices. Anyway, there's a link for this in the description below. I should mention that I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I do make money if you buy this book online using my link, of course, but yeah, that's cool. You know, if you do that, I'd really appreciate that. I need, I need to eat, man. It's kind of, kind of important. Anyways, guys. Please leave your comments below telling me what you prefer, which methods you prefer in this whole action, because I mean, it's pretty insane. People get very opinionated on this stuff. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty opinionated on it. I like clean code and I also like high performing code. So that's why I've given my recommended fix. But yes, guys, if you have any video ideas for me as well, please let me know in the comments too. But for now, I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.